Welcome to PALS. It's from Science and Anatomy Lecture Series. If you're just joining us and not part of this channel, please press the subscribe button below and be the first to get all our amazing lectures in anatomy and also you'll be part of this amazing anatomy family where we make anatomy simple. This is the second part of our lecture on the triangles of the neck. If you have not seen the first part of this lecture, we would love you to please go and get the first part so that you can continue with this second part. Let's go to class. Now, the carotid triangle. The carotid triangle is a highly vascular area. It derives its name from the location of parts of all three carotid arteries within this area. This makes the triangle important. The pulse of common carotid artery can be palpated by compressing it lightly against the transverse cervical process of the cervical vertebra. At the level of the superior border of the thyroid cartilage, the common carotid artery divides into its two terminal branches, internal and external carotid arteries. We will look at the boundaries of carotid triangle. Posteriorly, it is limited by the sonocleidomastoid, anterior inferiorly by the superior homohyoid, and superiorly by the stylohyoid muscle and the posterior belly of the digestive muscle. The floor is formed by hyoglossus muscle, thyroid muscle, middle constrictor and inferior constrictor muscles of the pharynx. The roof is still the same with the, some of the triangles we mentioned earlier, which is by the skin, superficial fascia containing the platysma muscle and cervical branch of fascia nerve, we also have the deep fascia. The major contents of this triangle are as follows. First, we'll look at the carotid sheath. The carotid sheath contains one, the common carotid artery and its branches, the internal jugular vein and its tributaries, and the vagus nerve. There are the rest of the arteries, veins, and nerves within this triangle as well. I will look and will see them in the course of the lecture. Now, let's start with the arteries. The common carotid artery is seen with the carotid sinus and the carotid body at its termination. We've, we've also mentioned the internal carotid artery and also the external carotid artery with its branches, such as the superior thyroid, the lingua, the fascia, ascending pharyngeal, and occipital branches. The internal carotid artery has no branch in the neck. We'll look at some of the veins. These are vena committants of the surrounding arteries. These veins will all drain to the internal jugular vein. We also have tributaries of internal jugular vein, and these tributaries include the common facial vein, pharyngeal vein, the lingual vein, superior thyroid vein, and the occipital vein. Now the nerves. The nerves we have in this region, as we mentioned earlier, are the vagus nerve. This is seen within the carotid sheath and running vertically downwards. We we'll see the superior laryngeal nerve, a branch of the vagus, dividing into the sternal and internal laryngeal nerves. Also the spinal accessory nerve running backwards over the internal jugular vein. Then the 12th cranial nerve, the hypoglossal nerve the upper root of ansa cervicalis, a branch of hypoglossal nerve, and branches of cervical plexus. The lymph nodes we have here are the deep cervical group of lymph nodes that are situated along the internal jugular vein. We look at the muscular triangle. The muscular triangle is bounded anteriorly by the median line of the neck from the hide bone to the sternum. Posterior inferiorly, it is bounded by the anterior margin of the senocleidomastoid and posterior superiorly, it is bounded by the superior belly of homohyoid. We have the floor formed by the stenohyoid muscle and the stenothyroid muscle. The same roof is seen just as in other structures, being formed by skin, superficial fascia with platysma, and then the deep cervical fascia. The major contents 
of this triangle are the muscles. And these muscles are the homohyoid, sinohyoid, sinothyroid, and the thyrohyoid muscle. Now we are set to go to the triangle found behind the synocleid mastoid muscle. And this is the posterior triangle of the neck. We will look at the boundaries. Anteriorly, we will be seeing the posterior border of the synocleid mastoid. And then posteriorly, we will be seeing anterior border of the trapezius muscle. And then inferiorly, we will see the middle one third of the clavicle. Superiorly is its apex. And this is at the level of the superior knuckle line. And this is found between the attachments of synocleid mastoid and trapezius to the septal bone. Let's look at the roof of this posterior triangle of the neck. Forming the roof are the investing layer of the deep cervical fascia and, of course, the platysma muscle. We also have the standard jugular vein, supraclavicular nerve, lesocyptal nerve. Forming the floor, we have the prevertebral layer of deep cervical fascia overlying the following muscles from superiorly to inferiorly we have splenius capitis, levator scapula, scalenius medius and scalenius posterior. The posterior triangle like the anterior triangle is also subdivided into smaller triangles. The subdivision of posterior triangle is done by the inferior belly of the homohyoid into occipital triangle and homoclavicular or subclavian triangle. Let's start with the occipital triangle. The occipital triangle is the upper and larger part of the posterior triangle. As for the boundaries of this triangle, apart from the inferior border which is formed by the inferior belly of the ohioid, the roof, superior, anterior and posterior borders are the same with that mentioned of the general posterior triangle. It also shares the same floor. Now the contents of occipital triangle. First we have the spinal accessory nerve, branches of cervical plexus which include lesser occipital nerve, transverse cervical, greater auricular and supraclavicular and phrenic nerve. We also have root and trunks of brachial plexus. And some of the roots of brachial plexus are the dorsal scapular nerve and the long thoracic nerve. There are vessels in this triangle also. Some of the vessels are the arteries, like the subclavian artery, transverse cervical artery, and suprascapular artery. The major vein we see here is the terminal part of external jugular vein. We have lymph nodes such as occipital lymph node and supraclavicular group of lymph nodes. We we'll look at the second triangle, which is the subclavian triangle, also called supraclavicular triangle. This is a lower and smaller division of the posterior triangle. The roof and the anterior and inferior boundaries are same with that of the posterior triangle of the neck, except that superiorly it is limited by inferior belly of homohyoid. The floor of this triangle is formed by the first rib, Scalenius medius, and the first slit of serratus anterior. There are some contents of this triangle, and some of them include the subclavian artery, the inferior part of the stellar jugular vein, the investing layer of deep cervical fascia, and trunks of brachial plexus. There are some leaf nodes too. The leaf nodes we have here are the superficial cervical leaf nodes that lie along the stellar jugular vein also running superficial to the stenocleid mastoid muscle. There are efferent vessels from these nodes that drain into the deep cervical lymph nodes. Before we round off on this lecture, we'll look at some of the clinical significance of the posterior, posterior triangle. First is the external jugular vein. As a result of the superficial location of the external jugular vein in this triangle, it makes it very vulnerable to injury. Also, the position of the accessory nerve. As a result of the position of accessory nerve in the triangle also, it could be damaged while taking lymph node biopsy. This is where we we'll draw the cutting for this lecture. We hope we have been able to 
improve your knowledge on the triangles of the neck. Please let us know your comments. And then, if you've not subscribed to this channel, we would love you to be part of this channel. Press the subscribe button below. And also, we have a number of other videos that are there for us to make anatomy simple. Thank you, and see you in my next class.